Good morning. Welcome to Casa de Cassidy. I am here to read the second graders at Huntersville Elementary. This book called The Best Book of Bugs. Now this is an informational book. It's pretty long. So I'm only going to be focusing on the parts of the book that talk about pollinators. Huh, I wonder what a pollinator is. Well, you are going to be learning about what a pollinator is and all of that fun stuff in the second video to this. But first we'll do the read aloud. All right, the best book of bugs. All right, we got Claire Llewellyn is the author. And I am going to quickly show you the copyright page just in case anyone is saying that I didn't tell who wrote this book. Okay, I'm not going to read this entire book because it would be a very long video and I'd probably lose your attention. So I'm just gonna focus on um, four parts. So one is a small world, um, a big collection, buzzing bees, and butterflies and moths. And the reason why I'm focusing on those is to one, introduce you to what an insect is, and two, focus on two major pollinators. All right, here we go. A small world. Can you imagine what it's like to be very, very tiny? Millions of creatures are no bigger than your fingernail. For them, the grass is as thick as a forest and a flower is as tall as a tree. Being small may sound scary, but it can be useful. Tiny bugs can hide anywhere, under a leaf, inside a nut, or deep in an animal's fur. Here, they are safe from birds, frogs, and other sharp-eyed animals that feed on them. All right, I want you to look at this beautiful picture while I read the next part. Hiding places. Bugs live all around us, yet most of the time we don't even know they are there. Look for them in places they like to hide, under a stone, inside a flower pot, or in a crack in the wall. I bet you you could go outside and find all kinds of bugs right now. Maybe you can do that after you read this book. All right, a big collection. There are millions of different bugs and spiders, and they all live around the world. In fact, there are so many different kinds that scientists have sorted them into groups. Each group contains animals with the same kind of body plan. All right, so this book looks at bugs or insects and spiders. All bugs and spiders have a hard casing on the outside of their bodies called the exoskeleton. This protects an animal's soft insides, just like a strong suit of armor. All right, so a big group of insects and spiders, they all have exoskeletons. So that's one category you could put all of these um, animals in from this book. Bugs, um, all the creatures on this page, the beetle, the bee, the butterfly, true bugs, flies, and ants, they are called bugs. There are more bugs in the world than any other kind of animal. Many bugs look very different from one another, but they all have three pairs of legs and three parts to their body, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Many bugs also have wings, and most have long feelers called antenna. All right, so let's focus on these really quick. These are all bugs, so they all have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. A head, a thorax, and an abdomen a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. This guy's um, thorax is hidden, but he's got a head, a thorax down under his wings, and an abdomen, and a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Now, I want you to pay attention. Most of them have wings, and most of them have antenna, but not all of them, all right? Also, a little thing about true bugs. True bugs are a special kind of bug with long, beaky mouth parts. So they have little beaks. All right. Now, the other category of animals that are often put with bugs because they have exoskeletons and other things that are similar are spiders 
and many beasts. So let's talk about the spiders first. Spiders are not insects. They have two parts to their body. They have a head and a thorax at the front that are connected. And then their abdomen is back here and it's at the back. Spiders have four pairs of legs, one more pair than bugs have. All right. Now, scorpions, mites, and ticks are closely related to the spider, but scorpions have two parts to their bodies. Mites and ticks have one. Like spiders, they each have four pairs of legs. All right, so they're all very similar, but they're not actually insects. Other mini beasts, you'll spot other mini beasts in this book. They live in the same kind of places as spiders and bugs. Centipedes and millipedes have long wriggly bottle bodies made up of segments. Centipedes have one pair of legs on each segment, but millipedes have two pairs of legs per segment. Snails and slugs don't have legs. They crawl along on their soft bellies. Snails live inside of a hard shell, but slugs don't have a shell. So that's the difference. A snail has a shell, slugs do not. Earthworms have long soft bodies that are covered with tiny bristles. They don't have skeletons or shells to protect them and they live in soft, damp soil underground. All right, so these guys are not insects. These guys are insects. Um, they're often grouped together because they live in the same places, um, but they have some differences. All right, so now let's talk about the buzzing bees because these are pollinators. We'll go into what a pollinator is in the next video. Buzzing bees. Honeybees are busy all summer long. They fly from flower to flower, feeding on sweet nectar inside. There are many different kinds of bee. Most of them live on their own in a burrow or a hollow stem, but honeybees live with thousands of others in a huge group called a colony. A colony works as a team. Together, the bees build a nest, find food, fight their enemies, and take care of their young. All right, so here's the bee's nest right here. Honeybees build their nest in a cave or a hollow tree. Bees make a waxy material, which they shape into long slabs called honeycomb. Bees nests are strong and may last up to 50 years. That's pretty interesting. All right. Now, there is another insect called a wasp and they look very similar. They have those bold um, yellow and black stripes. But a wasp um, is a little bit different. They live in colonies too, just like the honeybee. Every year they build a new nest out of thin sheets of paper and they make the paper themselves by chewing tiny pieces of wood and mixing it with their saliva. The nest has a small doorway, which is always guarded. The wasps keep their eggs and young safe inside. All right, so if you see one of these, stay away from it because they have a little guard that watches it and these guys hurt. These guys hurt too. For some reason, wasps just seem scarier. I wonder why. Alrighty, so that's the bees. Um, a honey bee's year. In a honey bee's nest, most of the bees are females called workers. A few of the bees are males called drones. One of the bees is the queen. When the queen is young, the queen bee mates with the drone. Soon after, she begins to lay thousands of eggs. She lays each egg in its own little pocket or cell in the honeycomb. Right? After three days, the eggs hatch into wriggly grubs called larvae. The worker bees feed the larvae with nectar and pollen from flowers. Okay? See that word pollen? It's going to be very important for our lesson. In a few days, the larvae are full grown and the workers seal the, their cells with wax. Inside each larva changes into a pupa, which then becomes a bee. So this is the life cycle of the bee. They're an egg, then a young larva, full grown larva, pupa, worker, drone, queen. Not all bees become queens. They're just, these are the three types of bees. All right, so then 
Once they become a bee, the new bee starts work as soon as they hatch. They clean the nest, feed the queen, and take care of the next batch of eggs. Let's see if I can get a little closer. As they grow older, the young bees start to make wax and build new slabs of honeycomb to hold extra food supplies for the winter. And during the summer, the workers leave the nest to gather food and they suck in sugary nectar from flowers with their long tongues. This is important because while they are on the flower, pollen will get on their legs and on their bodies. So just note that for later. Pollen is a yellow dust made by flowers. As they eat, the bees, bees comb pollen onto their back legs and carry it back to the nest. Inside the nest, the nectar is turned into honey and stored in the cells. The pollen is stored there too in layers. When a bee finds a new source of food, it returns to the nest and does a special dance to tell the other bees where they can find it too. Ooh, I wonder what their special dance looks like. Maybe we can make up our own special dance. That's the B. Um, I returned with food dance. Then, if the bee's nest gets too crowded, the old queen flies off with a swarm of workers to start a new nest. A larva in the old nest grows into the new queen. Okay, so that's them taken off. Honeybees rest in the winter, feeding on their honey supply and keeping warm. In the spring, they fly off in search of more nectar. All right, so there is our introduction to the honeybee, which is a type of insect that pollinates. The next one we are going to focus on is another major pollinator, which is butterflies and moths. Beautiful butterflies flutter through the rainforest, flashing their brightly colored wings. Butterflies are active during the day. They feed on flowers, sucking up nectar with their long curly tongues. Moths are usually active at night. In daytime, many moths rest on the trunk or branches of a tree. Their dull brown markings match a tree's speckled bark. This camouflage makes the moths hard to see. So, butterfly or moths. Butterflies are usually brighter than moths and have more delicate bodies. And a butterfly's antenna are clubbed at the tip and a moths are usually feathery. So, kind of show you a close-up of that. So feathery antenna for a moth and a clubbed, it means it has a little knob at the end for the antenna of the butterfly. All right, and then here is a beautiful picture showing some different butterflies and moths. All right, so just like we talked about the life cycle of the honeybee, um, this is the life cycle of a butterfly. There are 150,000 kinds of butterflies and moths and they, and their caterpillars come in all sorts of colors and sizes. The Atlas moth is as big as a dinner plate. The Western pygmy blue butterfly is not much wider than your thumb. Okay. So they can be little or big. They all start out as an egg. That egg hatches and they become a caterpillar. And then the caterpillar changes into a pupa. And then the butterfly comes out of that. This whole process is called metamorphosis. Okay, so here are some different kinds of butterflies. The um, atlas moth is the one that is as big as a dinner plate. Bright wings. The wings of butterflies and moths are covered with tiny scales that shimmer in the light. Some of them are brightly colored. Others have bold patterns or scary eye spots. When a butterfly or moth flashes its wings at its enemies, it confuses them and gives itself time to escape. And hey, I wanted you to see this hornet moth. It's crazy. It's actually not a moth. I mean, not a bee, but it has the same colors. All right. So I'm going to stop there and I will go to lesson number two, which is different activities that you can do with this book. All right. 
See you later.